Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we will understand about a singleton design pattern in Node.js. Here are the topics that we are going to cover in this video. First, we will see about classes and class instance. Then we will see what is a module caching in Node.js and how it fails. Next will be, do we really need to write a singleton class in Node.js or not? Let's understand about the use cases of singleton classes in Node.js. And the last will be some of the best practices that we can follow to write a singleton class. So if this sounds interesting, then stick around. Also, don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. All right, guys, so I already have a basic Node.js application. So if I go to the package JSON, then we see that we have this basic application and I have already created a express server and the application is listening on the port 5000. Now, before we start understanding about the singleton class or a singleton design pattern in Node.js, we really need to understand the basics like what is a class, what are the objects and how we create the instance of a class. So let's see an example here. So what I will do is uh, I will simply do a copy paste of a basic class which I will just explain you in a bit. So I have created a simple class person and this class has a constructor which has a variable which is the array. Now we have two methods in this class which is the add person which takes an argument of a person and then just push it into the array and the other method is the get people. So when you call this get people you will get the list of the persons that are added into this array. Now if I want to create the object of this class and if we want to have the instance of it what usually we do is I will do a constant we're going to have a person here and this will be a new and we have a person here so with the new keyword we actually create the instance of a person class now if you want to learn more about JavaScript and react then check out this Odin schools react web development live bootcamp let me walk you through the entire highlight of this bootcamp so you will get hands-on courses for front-end web and mobile development using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React.js and ES6. The bootcamp will offer you interactive learning experience. You will also get to build some real-time projects and they also have a lab platform where you can practice and code and you will be assessed regularly so that you don't miss anything. Odin School has partnered with top companies and that's where you are exposed to opportunities where you can land to your dream job. Check out some of their success stories where learners have used bootcamp for career transition, career upgrade, and career launch. Let me show you what you get once you enroll to this bootcamp. You will get weekly interactive classes, assessments, hands-on coding experience, career services, and certificate of completion. You will get the most in-demand skills under one curriculum. You will get hands-on projects-based learnings while building projects like shopping cart, video player, banking app. If you are interested in this bootcamp, then they have an upcoming cohort on 27th of April and next month 25th of May. You can get all the details here. If you are interested, then you can enroll or you have a question, just inquire and ask your questions. You can check out all the links related to the Odin School in the description of the video. Now let's get back to our topic. All right. And now with this person, you can access the methods. So what I will do is uh, I will have the person dot add person. And in this, I can simply pass a person. So maybe I will pass the name and I will pass name as the page. All right. So this is how we create a object from a class and have an instance of that particular class. Now let's do a console log as well. So I will do a console dot log and in the console log what i will do is i will have the person dot get people all right and when i do the get people you will see that we have an array and we have the entry which is the name the page now what if i want to create one more instance of the same class so what i will do is i will create a new constant i will have a person one and i'm going to use the new keyword again and i will have a new person now i will use the same thing and i will add one more entry to the array so this time i'm going to make it person one and instead of the page i will make it as john and if we do the console log then in that case what i will do is i will make it as person one and you will see that now we have two different arrays so that means we have created 
two different instances of the same class. One instance contains the name as the page and other instance contains the name as John. So this is the expected behavior that we created a multiple instance of a class and then we just added it. Now what I will do is uh, I'm going to remove this person class from here and I'm going to put it into a person.js and we are going to create a module here. So we will just export module person from the person.js and then we are just going to use it in the server.js. And one more thing before we go, I want to show you that if we want to check the instances, whether these two instances are same or not, what we can do is we can just do one more console log and this will actually compare the person with person one. And when I save it, you will see that these two are the different instances. So they are not the same instance. Now what we will do is we are going to just take out this person from here and we will put it into a separate file, which is the person.js. So what I will do is I will cut it from here. I will go here and I will put it here. And from here, what we will do is we are going to create an instance. So I will have a constant person instance and this will be equals to the new person. All right. So I have already created the instance and now I'm just going to export this module. So this will be module dot export and I'm going to export the person instance. And now we will see that what is the behavior of node.js. So when we have a module uh, as an export, so now we need to import it. So what I will do is I will have a constant. I will have the person one as require. All right. And then we are just going to add it person dot JS and I will just remove this. Now we don't have any person class here, so we will not be able to get it. And I will also just just make it as person all right and we will create one more so i will do is a constant we will have the person one which will be equals to the require and then i'm going to have the dot slash person dot js and now in this case you will notice that when we have this one we created person one and person two we just imported that because we have exported our module from here and here if we go if we add the person dot add person and we add the name and then we also add another name into the second variable which we created and now you will notice that when we log both the variables you will actually see that we get the same results and if also check that person is equals to the person one then it says the instance is true so what does this mean is that even though we did not create any singleton class yet still node.js whenever you have a module in a node.js it by default do a caching of it and it by default create a single instance. Let me show you the documentation. I will just zoom a little bit and here you will see that the modules are cached after the first time they are loaded and this means that it will give you exactly the same object return if it was resolved to the same file. So that means if we go and check in our code then we see that these two are the same files. So whenever you create a multiple variables or whenever you just import the same file with different variables you're always going to get the same object. But there is a caveat and that caveat is that how this actually work is that the modules are cast based on the resolved file name. So that means if you have a different file name or if you have a file at a different location with the same name, then in that case, it is going to create a new instance. Let's try with this example. So what we are going to do is we will go here and I will just go and change this and I will make this as a person.js. And now in this case, you will see that it's create two different instances and the instances are also false. So Node.js really look for the actual file names and it also very case sensitive. So if you make just a person, then it will just treat it as a different file and it will have a new object created. That's why you see that we have both the instances are now different. And in such cases, the default behavior of the Node.js, which is the module caching gets failed. And we can just avoid this by creating a singleton class wherever it is required. So that means you don't need to create a singleton class until it is required because by default, every module will be cached. So what we will do is uh, we will just understand what are the use cases where we can actually use the singleton class. So I will just go to the config JSON and in the config JSON, I'm going to paste it here. So the first use case would be that you want to load a configuration at the start of your application from some external file or some external source. In that case, you can just create a singleton instance and then you can use it. The second would be that you need to establish a database connection only once. In that case, also you can create a singleton class. And the third one, which is the cache or token. So in this case, we can create create a token holder singleton class. And this one is the one which I have used this personally, where you need to hold your token so that you can use the same token every time when you make an API request until the token is expired. So that's where these are the use cases where you can just use a singleton class and you don't want to rely on the Node.js caching. So we will just take an example of the first one and we will see that how we can load the configuration at the start of the application from a file on the external source. So I created a config JSON file here and now we will see that 
right how we can load this so before implementing let's understand what a singleton class means so in technical terms definition in software engineering a singleton pattern it's a software design pattern that restricts the instantiation of a class to a singular instance. That means we can have a class and that class can have only one instance created. We cannot have multiple instances of the same class. So when we implement a singleton class, we need to take care of two things. The first one is we need to have the hidden constructor. And the second one is we can only access the singleton instance using the get instance method. So we make a public method get instance. Let's go into the Visual Studio code and let's try to implement it. So here here in the Visual Studio code, what I will do is we need to take care of two things. First one is the hidden constructor. So what we will do is I will just create a class and I will name it as a private config manager. And this will going to have a constructor inside it. And what we will do is this will have a this dot config as a variable, which I will just have an empty object for now. Now this class will have two methods. First will be the load config because we want to load our config from the config JSON. So here what we will do is we will have the load config function and there will be a second function which will be the get config which will just return the config that we have. So I'm going to have the config and I will just do a return this dot config. And here what we'll do is we I'm just going to copy paste some code to fetch the data from the file. So I'm going to copy and I'm going to put it here. All right. We will also need to import the FS module. So I'm going to go here and I will import the FS module. So this is how we have it. We have a private config. We have a constructor and then we have the load config which will just load the configuration and put it into the and this will get changed to this config now what we will do is whenever we instantiate this class we are just going to call this dot load config so it will just load the config all right so the first thing what we wanted to do is we wanted to have the hidden constructor and the second thing what we wanted is we wanted to have a public method which was get instance so what we will do is now we will going to create a singleton class so let me have a another class which will be a singleton so i will have a singleton class all right and in the singleton class we are going to have a constructor and we will just throw error so i will have the new error and we will have the use singleton dot get instance to get the instance of this class so we cannot create a instance using the constructor and then what we will do is we are just going to have a static method which will be the get instance so let's have the get instance and what we will do is that if singleton dot instance so if we don't have an instance then we create a new instance so let's create a new instance singleton dot instance this will be equals to the new private config manager so now you will see that in this way we actually hide the constructor so this was the constructor and we are already hiding it so this is how we will do it and the second one was to get the instance using the get instance so that's why we created a st static method now we will just return the instance. So I will have the singleton dot instance. Now what we will do is we already return it. Now let's have a module export. So I will have the module export and this module export will be equals to the singleton. Now let's see how we can use it. So if I want to use this, if I go to the server.js, uh, for now I will just remove everything related to the person as we have already understood this part. So I will remove everything. So here what I will do is I will just import it. So I will have the config manager and this config manager manager will be equals to the require and I'm going to use it as config JSON. So let's have the config dot JSON. All right. And I can also do a console dot log. So we will just log the config manager dot get instance. So this is how we are going to get the instance. And then we need to have the config which is on the instance. So I will have the config and you see that we have loaded the config now. So this can be used as a global variable kind of thing where you can just use the singleton class instance in any of your classes in the application code and you can just make it use. So it is a very good way of also sharing the data among the modules. So let's try to create one more variable and see what we get. So I'm going to change this to manager two this time. All right. And if I try to do the config, so I will go here, I will have the config and I will have the two and you will see that we get the same thing. All right. We can also check the instances now. So if I go and check the instance, so I'm going to copy and just paste it here and you will see that we get the same instance, which is true. Instead of the config, you can also do the get config and this will also give you the same result. So I'm going to copy and I will also add it here and we should get the same result. So you see, we get the same result. Now, what if someone tried to just change the 
config variable so what we will do is uh, i'm going to have the config manager dot get instance dot config and if someone try to change this config variable so someone is trying to do that we have a port as maybe 2002 and then we have the connection string and the connection string as the page all right uh, we did an extra basis so let's remove that all right then in that case you will see that now it got changed so now if we do a get config we get the new config variable which was just changed so we can also do one more thing that if we want to prevent the user from changing it we can just add some more code and we can just prevent it but before that what we will do is if someone tries to have a new instance so before that let's try to console log this config manager so i will have a console.log and i will have a config manager and this you will see that this is a class instance of singleton now someone tried to do a new instance with a new keyword so in that case it should throw an error and if i save it then you will see that we get an error that throw new error use singleton get, get instance so that's how we are not allowing the user to create a new instance and they can only use a single instance all right now if we also want to prevent the user from changing this variable config what we can do is we can go here and here i will make a config object and here what i will do is i'm going to have a config which will be an empty array now i will change it accordingly so i'm going to have a config object here dot config and whenever someone returns this i'm going to do a config object dot config and if i go and save it then we should be able to see the same result all right and we change this to config object dot config then we see that we get this 2002 and thing but we want to prevent user from changing this so what we can do here is we can create it this now we can just use the object dot freeze and we can just freeze the this dot config object all right and when we do this then you will see that cannot assign to a read only property config of the object so that's how we are preventing the user to make any changes in the config and user cannot do anything so that's how you can create a singleton class and node.js wherever you need a caching and the node.js caching gets failed then only you create the singleton class otherwise in node.js it will work out of the box and you will get caching of the modules automatically and you can also see there are some of the use cases and two important things we need to note that we need to have a hidden constructor and the second one will be the public method get instance so that's all i have in this video i hope you now understand the singleton design pattern in node.js very well and you also know when to use it when not to use it and is singleton pattern really required in node.js or not so i hope you like the video a thumbs up is appreciated you can also connect with me via facebook or instagram you can follow me on twitter for latest updates and before you go don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one thank you thanks for watching